Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to look about the how to connect the GNS3 remote server. All right. So currently, how uh, why do you want to connect to the remote server? So the main reason would be that lack of your uh, what do we say hardware capability. So you might not have the capability of your, uh, you might have only a laptop like a GP of RAM and like a normal laptop with a Intel Core i5 or something. But so your requirement is like you want to do some kind of uh, CCNA, CCNP or like CCIE labs and they do require like a very lot of RAM and high computation of the hardware and everything. So on your remote server, <clears throat> we can say that you do have something called as like uh, maybe 128 GB of RAM, maybe 16 core CPUs. So these are the requirements and like the hard disk may be like 3.5 TB of hard disk, whatever it might be. This is your GNS3 remote server. Now this remote server is able to be accessible on the ISP. That means I'm able to reach out to this IP address. So currently in my lab, it is 150.1.7.2. <clears throat> And now this is my PC over here. All right, so this is my PC over here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to only install GNS3 client. So in this PC, I'm only going to install the client. There will be no VM, GNS3 VM install on this machine. Because I'm going to config, connect to the GNS3 client to my remote server. And on that remote server, I'm going to run my whole topologies and everything. So now in my lab scenario, now I do have my laptop. And within that laptop, I am running my virtual PC. So in this PC, I'm, I will be only installing the GNS3 client. And my remote server will be on my physical laptop. So basically both of these uh, PCs and the physical, uh, uh, what do we say, the GNS3 virtual machine, both of them are on the 150.1.7.0 slash 24 network. But the only requirement here is that you should be able to ping and you should be able to reach over the internet. So that's how I have designed over here. So you, I'm able to reach, that's it. So once you are able to reach, then we can go ahead and connect to that remote server. So let's go, go ahead and see that one. So I have installed my GNS3 over here. It's a new install. Nothing has been configured here. And you should see that there is only one uh, server that is my physical system. You see that only my physical system currently it is running on the GNS3 client. Now my intention is to connect to that remote server which is located at 150.1.7. Uh, this one is number five. So let's, uh, I will go ahead and ping first. So I will say that CMD and I will say that ping 150.1.7.5, I am able to ping. So this is very important because if you are able to ping then you are able to add that one. Now, the next thing is that I will also get the snapshot of my, what do we say? Uh, I will take an image. Okay. So now this is my GNS3, which is running on my physical hardware. And you see that this is my IP address over here. So this is my IP address. And it is saying that you are able to connect to my GNS3 on port number 80. And also you see that the username is also GNS3 over here. And the password is also GNS3. So these are the main things you have to get in details here. So let's go ahead and add that remote server now. So I will go to the edit, I will go to preferences and I will go to server. So here I do have an option of remote server. So I will click on add and I will say that name will be maybe GNS3 remote server, and I will provide the IP address. That should be 150.1.7.5. Again, I said that port number should be 80, so select port number as 80, 
and enable the authentication. Yes, without authentication, it will not allow you to connect. So I will say GNS3 and GNS3 is my username and password. So click on OK and click on Apply. And you see that GNS3 remote CPU has been added. Now, sometimes first time when you add, you will don't see that the green color over here. So what you have to do, you just have to turn off and restart your GNS3 VM. So we just have to wait until both of those servers shows up over here. All right, so I'll click on cancel and you see that both of them are now green color. So let's go to the new full new project. And this is my project. Now, if you see that I don't have any, I do have only one of these templates which has been installed, okay? So uh, for testing purpose, which I did. So if I delete that template, that's it. So currently I don't have anything installed over here. So let's uh, go ahead and install. So now number one, if I go to my GNS3, supported images, and even though if I want to see the images, I will click on add a new template. I will go to the install and appliance from the GNS3, click on next. Now I will go to routers first and I do have this router which is matching the library name. So I will click on install. And you see that you do, do have two options. One is to install the, in the local computer, but we don't want. So images are already present in my remote server. So I'm not doing anything currently. I'm just telling to my template is that I want to install this template in my remote server. That's it. So select that remote server, click on next. And now, if you see that, it will generate a list as usual when we are trying to install any device. But if the image name matches or MD5, some file and everything matches, it will automatically show you that it has been ready to install. So I will click on next and yes, and finish. Now, similarly, if I go to the next template, that should be next and I will try to install the switch. So that should be this one. So I'll click on install. I will select the same install appliance on the remote server. Click on next, click on next. And you see that I am not downloading or not uploading anything. It's already been present before. So it's already been installed. So it's like someone is providing you the GNS3 virtual machine remotely. So they will, the images will be already loaded into the virtual machine. You only go ahead and install the templates on your client. That's it. You see that ready to install, click on next and yes, and install. And similarly, if I go to and check on the defense, for example, I want to go with the ASAV firewall. So I will click on install. So it is selecting automatically, click on next and next. And you see that I don't have any images here. It's not reading. So that means it is a custom image. So I need to find out the name of that image. So I'll go to the FileZilla now and I will type in the IP address and I will type in the username and password as GNS3 and port number will be 22. And just click on OK. Always trust, click on OK. So now you see that I'm connected to that particular remote server. So I'll go back, go back, and I will go to the opt GNS3 images and KMU images. And you see that these many, these many images I do have already have in, in my remote server. Next, I want to install the ASAV. You see that this is a different name over here, ASA. So that's why my GNS3 is not picking up that image. So I will click on create a new version. I will say like 9.8 maybe. So now I will say that asav.qcow2. Come back here to FileZilla. Make sure that you enter the same exact name. Come back to GNS3, click on OK. And now you see that this time it is saying me ready to install. Click on next and yes, and finish. Now I also have the some of the Docker images installed. So I will click on new template, import it on the GNS3 server. So click on next. I will go to guest. So one of those will be the web term, which I want to install. Select that one, click on install, click on next and click on install. 
So now WebTem is already been installed on the virtual, uh, what do we say, remote server. So if I just grab it here, now instead of downloading from the Docker images, it is automatically providing me the image. That's it. It is not downloading one more time. So if I click on right click, and you see that it has been started, and here you can see that WebTem. And similarly, if I go to my router, that is uh, 71, 7200 series, so right click, <clears throat> it is also started. So right click and console, I want to take the console. Right, so I'm able to take the console, so I'm right click and console, I'm able to take the console. So now let's uh, go ahead and do some uh, lab, just to make sure that it's working or not. So here I want to assign an IP address, config T interface, interface F0, FA0 slash zero, IP address will be 10.1.1.1, and no shut, exit, IP HTTP server, IP HTTP authentication will be local, and username will be Cisco, privilege will be 15, and password will be Cisco, and that's it. Now I will go back to my web term now. So I will uh, provide an uh, IP address for this one. So I will say that IP address add 10.1.1.2 slash 24 day VTH zero. If I ping 10.1.1.1, I should be able to ping. That's good. And now if I go back to the web browser and if I say 10.1.1.1, I should be able to take the access. And everything, if I say show IP HTTP server history, and now you see that I'm able to. So what's happening over here is that I am now connected to this remote server. So whatever the topology I am running here, all the topologies are running inside this VM. So the settings, how it has been made over here doesn't matter now, you are within a Topology. This topology is entirely running on this particular remote server and you are able to create and you are able to do your labs which you cannot do it on your physical lab because of your hardware capability. Alright, so this is the verification. So now if I come back to here and if I see that if you want to download the images until unless the remote server guy allows you, you can go ahead and download the images also. So wherever you like, you can go ahead and download the images on the folder. All right, so now next thing is that I want to install this uh, Firepower FTD device, Cisco FTD. So I will right click and I will say rename. I will copy that name, go back to my GNS3, go back to the new template. So click on next and go to the firewall. And if I select FTD, select install, select install next and you see that I don't see that. So currently that image is like 6.5 version. So I will say 6.5. So click on OK and I will paste that same name. Click on OK and you see that it's been ready to install. Now click on Next and yes, finish. So now I need not worry because uh, you see that I do have the FTD. Now FTD, if I come back here, you see that it is taking uh, AGB of RAM and I will say that three virtual CPUs, click on OK. But if I go back to my PC, So in my PC, it's totally installed is 16 GB RAM. This is like my physical normal PC now, but it's already been taking the 8 GB of RAM. So this RAM will not be consumed from your physical system. So if I go to my task manager and if I go to the performance and you see that currently it is running 3.4 GB of RAM. So if I go back to my, GNS3, I will just make a name, this one as the FTDV, click on OK, and right click and start and run that. Okay, so it is starting on this one, so I need to stop it, I need to configure this one into VNC, click on OK, start and run. So now my FTD is running, which is taking a heavy load, that is three virtual CPUs and eight GB of RAM. So if I come back to my, here you see that memory, it is still taking 3.4 GBs. So it has no impact on my physical system. Everything is being impacted onto the remote server 
on that particular remote server only. Nothing will be impact on your, uh, what do we say, on your physical system. So everything, this one is everything running on the remote server. It's uh, nothing is being stored on your local PC. So once you are disconnected from the internet and you are not able to connect to this remote PC, that's, the, that's it, you are not able to run the topologies over here. All right, so that's how we connect to the remote server in the GNST. I hope this was informative for you and thank you.